in analytics, you can import portfolio data from Excel, both in a very basic way. I you might might just want to bring a portfolio from Excel with just current holdings. Portfolio A includes ten funds at these ten percentages. Want to whip that into analytics and start running some analysis, or in a dynamic historic way where you can show all of the changes um, a portfolio has made and import all of those on mass. Once you're enabled for this feature, it's over here, just Excel Portfolio Importer, but it's quite a, a fiddly tool to use, hence the purpose of putting together this quick video. So the data itself needs to be in a particular format. So this is a, a good example. So if you're pulling in a historic portfolio where you want to include all the changes that have been made historically, it needs to look a bit like this. Now the columns can be in different order, it doesn't have to be in this particular order, but you need headings. And I would suggest do the heading portfolio name, ISIN, code, weight, date, etc. You'll see in a minute you can you're going to need to link those up to what fields we have in the importer. And then when the importer imports this portfolio, it's going to do row by row. So it's going to say it's going to look at that first cell and say there's a portfolio you want to import called enhanced income portfolio. It has that fund at that weight on that date. And it's going to come down and say, okay, well, there's another portfolio. Oh, it happens to be the same. Enhanced income portfolio has that fund, that weight on that date. And slowly but surely, it will build a portfolio um, on the 31st of 10th, 2018 um, of these holdings. Now, leave the cell blank under code if it's cash. If there's any kind of cash holding, just leave it blank. And the system's been configured to recognize a blank cell under code as cash. And as you can see, then the portfolio made some adjustments on the 1st of 12th, 2018. There were some changes that were made all the way down here. So that's kind of the next part of the portfolio, etc. So really just building lots of portfolios, but then we'll glue them together in analytics. Um, in this case, all the way uh, to 2021 in, in September. So that's what the, the, um, the import file needs to look like. Now, if you were just importing a static portfolio, i.e., you just wanted to look at today's holdings, you wouldn't need to worry about the date tab. All you'd need to do clearly is what the portfolio is called, the ISIN code and the weight, etc. Um, another tip as well, if you're importing lots of portfolios, because there's not really any limit to how many portfolios you can import in one hit, um, that, that's why you've got the portfolio name tab. So when you come down to the bottom, now you've got, I don't know, model portfolio five or enhanced income uh, plus portfolio. You just change the name. This one's called model portfolio five, fund code, weight, date. And the system automatically recognizes that we're now we're talking about a completely different portfolio. So when it imports all the data, it will import however many models you have on this um, workbook. Do not create separate workbooks. Um, it won't recognize the different workbooks. You need to have it on one worksheet and you simply use that tab or column there to for the system to recognize that we're talking about a completely different model. And as I said, you can have as many models on this um, sheet as you like. Now, so once you've got the data in the, the right format that we need it in, if I come into analytics, so the importer is over here under Excel Portfolio Importer. Click on that. And you, you need to build yourself a template. You need to build a template in analytics that is going to recognize this um, file you're bringing in. So if you click on new template and choose file. So there's a file on my computer. Um, just going to find it now. Here we go. Let's just close that. There we go. In import headers. And when you hit import headers, it doesn't actually look like anything's happened, but it has. It's just imported the headers of that Excel file, meaning that you can now kind of join the dots. So this is quite logical. What's the template called? I'm just going to call this um, uh, HPR, Historic Portfolio Import. It's my HPI template. You can call it whatever you like. What's the type of portfolio import? This is what I was talking about earlier. Is it a basic import where you're just simply pulling across today's holdings and therefore there's not going to be any date um, assigned to the portfolio. But no, no, this is a historic because I'm bringing across all the, the dates and the changes I've made historically. What's the portfolio name column called? Well, that's why I've called it portfolio name. So when the system's looking for the portfolio name column, we've called it portfolio name. So we're just joining the dots that way. Uh, I wouldn't worry about client name. It's not a mandatory field. Ignore it. It's saying, okay, well, when, when the system goes and looks for the portfolio date column, what have you called it? Again, there's my four headers that I had in my Excel file. So clearly that's the, the date one. Um, holding code, 
Um, that's the icing code field. So as I said, you could you can create the columns and, and call them whatever you like. You don't have to call them portfolio name, icing code, weight, etc. It just makes it slightly easier when you're joining the dots here. So it's icing code. What type of code are we looking for? Well, mine's an icing. Um, if I'm being honest, it doesn't really matter. You just leave it on any and it will just search for all of them. Um, but if you wanted to, you can just flip it to icing. We're just looking up icing codes. Um, what's the holding value? Um, that's the weight um, and value type. That was percentages because you can obviously import portfolios using monetary amounts and number of units, but we're looking at percentages. So it's the percentage is the value. And what's the currency? It's generally going to be pounds sterling. Um, and that's me done, saved. So now I've got two things. I've got my Excel file in the background. I've now got a template and the two should recognize one another when it tries to import it. So back to this screen. File to import, historic portfolio import. What do I want to use that on? I want to, I want to run my HPI um, template. And if I click on import file, it will give me this screen here where, again, if you've, if you've imported more than one model, it will show all of the models you've imported. But if I click on the model I'd like to import, and again, if you've got more than one, click on that one. But if I want to there we go, click on that portfolio, it shows me all of the data it's gone and ingested. Um, there aren't any warnings, sometimes there are errors, like if you've got an icing code wrong, or maybe the icing is old and the fund no longer exists, that sort of stuff. Sometimes you might get errors pop up, but it's, um, it's obviously not likely if you've got to uh, fill in the data correctly. Um, and if you then click on import portfolios over here, give that a few seconds, confirms how many portfolios have been imported. Um, and if I now come back to the main screen, this is called enhanced income portfolio. So if I close all this down under my portfolio tab, open that up for a few seconds. There it is. That's one I've just imported. And if I just open it up, and you can see all the tabs. If you think back to the Excel file initially, uh, we started off on the 31st of 10th, 2018 with all of those funds. So again, you've got the funds, the, the, the percentage and the date. That's what it's doing. And again, the 2% in pound sterling cash has been assigned there. Um, and then as I go through the tabs, these are just all the data in the Excel file, but it's been in, imported in seconds. And even if I had 20 models on the Excel file, it wouldn't take much longer to import it. It's a very quick feature to use. Um, hopefully that's useful. Um, any questions, click on contact us, give our help desk a call.